Okay, so officially welcome to the April 14th Chaos Common Metrics meeting. Uh, we just reviewed the action items from the previous meeting, so we'll need to follow up with the nod separately on, on those action items. Um, we also have a few open issues and PRs. I, I want to start with the pull request. Has anybody, does anybody know what this is? Let me take a look. Sorry, I added a comment. Yeah. Just, I just didn't know what it was. So to your point. Metrics, okay. Yeah, I don't either. And it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. Wow. Yeah, and I don't know what. So the stuff that is in the git ignore is related directly to using a particular IDE, idea J. So all that idea J stuff, we wouldn't want to accept any of that. So all that would, we don't want to litter up our repositories with IDE specific stuff. Yeah, and this, there's a- Although I guess, I guess the adding of the stuff to, I don't know, yeah. No, no, nothing should, we shouldn't have a dot idea folder period. No, yeah. um, period. And I would say the outreachy stuff is, I think it's in the wrong repo. Honestly, it should be in the community repo. Yeah, I, I thought this was an accidental pull request uh, when I was looking yeah. at it. I don't, I don't think they, they meant to do this. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to pull up this Yeah. Um, is there a link that I should point this person to for the outreachy stuff? I think it should go in the community repo because that's where we're putting all the rest of our mentoring and outreach work. But I mean, is there, are there, are, sorry, is, there, is, a is there a link with instructions for outreachy applicants for what to do? Yeah, I would just, I would say yeah. maybe join the uh, outreachy channel in Slack because yeah. that's where we have all that stuff. Okay. How does that sound? That's perfect. Okay. I just want to be nice because, you know, thank you for doing all of this, but. Yep. Okay. Well, I think one of the things with outreach is they have to. We've been seeing this a few times. They have to, um, at the RHC site, they have to submit um, like an issue that's been accepted or a PR that's been merged or an issue that's been, you know, like put in or accepted PR. So I think a lot of the students are trying to get that done mm -hmm. because they have to show like work that they've done in the community during this period. That's all. Yeah. So this is the same person, correct? I don't think so. I think it's a different person. Yeah, it is a different person. Oh, okay. Um, is this also outreachy related? I don't know. I I had commented just before this meeting. Okay. I'm not quite sure what OKRs are and what the relationship is to the metrics work we're doing. So that's why I asked if they were going to come today. Yeah, I mean, so I I actually spent several hours this morning working on OKRs. Oh, so well then. Um, <laughs> so it, it stands for Objective and Key Results. It was something that was invented by one of the founders of Vintel, Andy Grove, I think. Um, and it's basically just a way of stating your your objectives as, as kind of outcomes, like what do you want to achieve, and then having key results that tie into each objective. And then they it's sort of cascade so that my objectives and key results um, are tied back into my managers and their managers and the managers managers so that things are are aligned. Um, so so, so I'm really not sure how the metrics. Um, as, as OKRs, I so even though I, I 
know quite a bit about OKRs, I don't understand this issue either. So it's not, not just you. Okay. So the way you described it, like OKRs are very specific to your particular <laughs> relationship and expected outcomes at VMware. And yeah. for metrics are not that. The closest, the closest thing we have are those kind of general objectives that we have. Right, in the objective header. And we, we've made a point in the past of not being specific because these metrics are, are very contextual, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, so we will, so Matt commented and asked, um, so we'll see, we'll see what we get from that. Um, is there anything we need to do on the release notes and the metrics candidate? I think we're okay, Kevin. I don't know. Is it just the one? Are we just releasing the one metric in, in common? Yep. Yeah. Uh, was the, was the, so we're missing the, did, was the issue created in translation? So I think this one was. I'm pretty sure I checked on it. I'm pretty sure it was. Okay, so it's just not checked off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I will I will check that. And the metric was added to the website. And we announced the review. Um, okay, so that the announcement's done too. Yep. W were there any comments on this one we need to address? Just scroll down, yeah. I think I had said this is good to go. Yeah, there was yeah. a reference formatting issue which I fixed, and now I recall from my comments. So there is the B hack issue too, maybe. That one right there. Uh, so I, th I think this that is a uh, I think that's implicit in our description of what this metric is. So I, I think the fact that uh, B hack pulled out that this would be interesting to look at is a oh, function of what the metric is. B hack is on, so that's Stefano. So hi. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I mean, we're I, I don't think we're we're super explicit about it, but in the definition, this is implied. Um. Oh, sorry. Did we within the focus area add the metric in the table and provide a link to the metric and metric question? Did we do that? Can I can go look? I think I did, but okay. Just make sure so that we nail that down. While you do that, I'm going to back up a little bit because the note was a couple minutes late and you had most of the action items from the last meeting. <laughs> so do I'm going to go back. You can't, you can't just skip the whole action item review by being five minutes late. I mean, nice try. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not the intent. I, my bus got delayed. so. Sorry for that. <laughs> no, no worries. I'm just teasing. Um, do you want to do you want to run through the the action items from from last week? Uh, I've got them here on the screen. I think uh, first action item was done. Uh, like it's ready for release, but since we were in the review period, so but for the second, I haven't worked yet. So okay. Yeah. So first um, is uh, we can just take a look if it is good, then we can move it in a 
release, like a, a continuous release. Okay. Let's get out of the next meeting section for the things that we should yep. talk about. Oops, did that twice. Um, and then there was one more, I think. Um, okay, and you said that yeah. you already this. Yeah, so. I already fixed those and I have like, it's good for the. Okay. Cool. Hey, Stefano. Hi. Can you see me? Yes. Yep. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. All oh right. <clears throat> I just dropped the uh, Google Doc into the chat in case anyone came on late and did not have the link. Thank you. So go ahead and add yourself to the. Uh, yeah, I think I lead. didn't Sorry. add myself yet, actually. No, you, no, I added you. Sorry. <coughs> oh, thank you, Don. <laughs> um, okay, so Matt, did you figure out? All good. Yep, All you good. can check it. Okay. So that one's done. 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 Um, cool. Is there anything else, Kevin, that we need to talk about for um, for the release? No, this is uh, uh, no every, everything was done correctly here, so this is perfect. And the the message at the uh, the end that it's ready for release is uh, uh, a very good signal for me to uh, put it on the website. Uh, oh, I don't know whether the header was released for the like uh, for the final release. We put the header in the matrix, so I'm not sure whether that has been removed or not. Uh, uh, well, we should take a look. I think I may have removed it, but uh, there's a chance I didn't. It's gone. Okay. It's gone. Okay. Cool. Then, then I, then I, I must have removed it when I added the uh, data privacy statement. So. Oh, I will say there, there is one thing I've noticed with the, uh, for some reason, uh, none of these metrics candidate release issues include a link to the actual metrics markdown page in them. Uh, I know that is, that was, that is part of the, the template that we created for this. Uh, so at the, at the top, click on the, uh, the new metric. So uh okay it's this one does so, this one does so, I, I don't know if it was edited or yeah the reason is uh because when when somebody creates that issue at that time the website link is not live so we cannot have that link exactly and uh, no, that's not, where there is a not to the and, not to uh, the website to the yeah. markdown to the markdown page oh to so, the github markdown yeah okay. most of them that i'm seeing are linking to the google doc okay and uh, the same is the reason because uh, like when somebody creates an issue, the markdown or pull request has not been accepted or something because it needs to be edited uh, subsequently. I do think any, I know what you're talking about, Vinod, sometimes it's just like a timing issue. Yes, but yes. I think that most that I would have added, Kevin, should be pointing to the markdown. So okay. I think I went back and edited those to to do what you wanted to have done, but then like to also kind of <laughs> I had to do what Vinod did just described because there wasn't a merged markdown yet. I know where to point sometimes. So regarding the regarding the website or the markdown files, so we do we do follow standard naming conventions for that yeah. so you you could actually generate these links prior to them existing you just run the risk of someone uh commenting that the uh the link is broken okay uh, prior to prior to it going live is that in the checklist i wonder kevin the the like make sure it's in that the metric can be found here link is in pointing to a markdown file not a google doc uh no, however, when I mean this this whole bit that we're looking at now with the metrics quality checklist, this was a template that we created so that we could just copy and paste it in. Uh, and originally, so but I guess I guess the issue is that the, this metric can be found here 
uh, when you delete out the uh, the example metric or the example link, you're you're no longer seeing the uh, that originally it was intended to be the markdown file. So maybe we could just on the next round of things, we'll just add a checkbox that says make sure you're pointing to a markdown file, not a Google Doc. Yeah, just so we're clear on which file we're editing. Yeah. Uh, and you can and you can jump back and forth between the uh, the markdown and the comments being made as well. Yep. So was it Kevin that was going to do that update or Matt to the template? I can do it. It shouldn't be too hard. And it doesn't have to be done for six months anyway, so <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Cool. All right. Um, so I'm going to call that that bit done. And uh, Stefano, did you want to talk more about this? Uh, Working group metrics and OKRs issue. Um, yes, um, yeah, mainly I was trying to track a little bit the, all the the metrics and also um, our metric releases. How we are going to collect with soft with software some kind of uh, automa automatically um, metrics um, with with Gitmore Lab and so on, but. The main issue that we have in some open source projects that are backed mainly by big enterprises is that that sometimes when we collect these metrics, we could try to um, uh, to set up some kind of guidelines related to how to transform these interesting metrics about open source software um, to targets, because you know mainly that to improve some of these metrics. If you are not going to transform this in OKRS or something like similar uh, KPI, KPI performance metrics, um, it's hard to change something um, uh, in what we have as an enterprise gatekeeper in the code on in the repository. So, for example, if you want to increase the pull request response time, okay. You need the, some way to transform these in um, in a from metric to target. I mean, and so generally, some very large company in Silicon Valley could be organized around OKRS or other kind of um, uh, metrics that are generally reviewed uh, uh, multiple times in the year. And so, this kind of things transforming from metrics to to target could be really interesting to have a real impact for large open source projects that are managed by um, medium and large uh, enterprise companies i mean so when generally we have many people that or employee that are working directly on the project and we have external community member and so on so yeah the problem here is that also, when we are going to transform uh, metrics in targets, we have some kind of social and technical problem like the one that I have um, commented in the next comment related to Campbell Law um, and also in Good Heart Law. So merely was something related. I think that we can try to read this more in general, but probably we can talk also about this later, but it's uh, related to um, to the point that is something like when we are going to transform metrics in targets, we we are generally we are going to um, overfit the um, the metrics as a target, and so generally is something like the metrics is not good anymore because it's a target that is that is going to be over overfitted by. Um, the organization or people working um, on the target. So, for example, if we are going to tell, okay, um, we have the pull request response time metric or the um, uh, merge window, so the time between the um, when the pull request was created 
and the review time and when it was finally merged in the repository. And we transform these metrics in a target. So in, in an OKRS or KPI for teams, for the internal teams in the company. I think that we could probably go into our fit these metrics and so lowering a little bit the, the quality of the review if you just want to maximize the number of pull requests that was merged. Um, so this is just for making an example, but it's a quite general effect that we have when we transform metrics in targets. But as it, I still think that it's quite important to, to impact on, especially on very large open source projects, to impact on these metrics on the real performance that we have on the code owner mainly or the or on the maintainer of the project, I think that probably we can find a way to suggest how to transform these metrics in target and how to mitigate the Godhart and Campbell effect on this kind of transformation. So what I'm guessing if, if this is my first meeting that we have with you, so I don't know if it, it could be still in your perimeter as a chance organization. But I still think that for large open source projects that generally are backed by a large company, this could be really interesting to have a real impact in the community and the project repository. I mean. I wonder if this would fit in better with some of the discussions that we're having around the metrics models, because I mean, this fundamentally is about um, making it a lot easier for real companies to actually use the, the data that they're getting out of the metrics and be able to do it in a way that they can tie it into their you know, business metrics or, or OKRs, which is kind of what we're trying to do with some of the work on the metrics models. Yeah, it's something like that. And also it's some, a sort of warning about when we are doing this kind of model, we need to always handle the, um, the more general effect about good heart law or campbell law. Uh, and so we need to really care about how to mitigate this kind of effort that I think that quite natural when we are going to tell to some kind of companies, yeah, you can transform these metrics in your internal goal. Um, but we can have this kind of effect. So it's something that it's a, a sort of bias that we need to mitigate Mainly. So yeah, I, I agree. I think this is this is not something we're doing in the metrics models, but something we might certainly want to think about. Kevin, I saw you nodding your head too. So Stefano, basically with respect to metrics and metrics models, the way that we're kind of working right now is that in any one of our working groups like common or evolution or risk we have a set of metrics like atomic metrics like um you know time to merge a pull request or time to get a first comment like a kind of a very small metric the metrics models are really serving as ways to bring these specific metrics together in ways that might so like a, a metric model might be responsiveness for example. And there are a variety of different ways we could look at responsiveness. We could look at you know, response to PRs, we could look at response to issues, we could look at response on a Slack channel, we could, you know, there are a bunch of different ways. So the model would be responsiveness, and then we'd bring together half a dozen smaller metrics, or, or just metrics, I should say, just bring together a half a dozen metrics that help us comprise what that model might look like. Yeah, I mean that I think that could be interesting, but we can have this, we could have the same kind of effect. I mean, if we are have some kind of responsiveness um, index, I mean, that it was composed by many micrometrics. I think that the problem is that if we are going to an organization to suggest, okay, you can just take this index and transform this to a, to a, to a target, um, what it what are the risks mainly to overfit the responsiveness? I mean, uh, for example, just to make an example, could be that you are just going to the triagers to quickly close all the bugs and and <laughs> forward that to Stack Overflow or or other kind of um, support too quickly. I mean, so 
we are going to lower um, the quality of the triage of the tickets if we are going to transform, for example, the resp responsiveness in, um, in a target for, or, or to suggest uh, to transform the responsiveness in a, um, in a target. So I think that this risk is quite common and it, I think that it's quite natural. So I think that probably, or we can try to balance merely some kind of uh, metrics that could be balanced between one, but the problem is, is that what is really hard, honestly, is that sometimes when you, you can have some quantity, quantitative metrics, generally it's hard to grasp, uh, to balance that kind of bias with qualitative metrics, because generally you have this kind of metrics that could be automatically col collected, uh, like for example, the response time on a ticket, uh, but yeah, generally, if you are going to fit that specific matrix, uh, generally it's hard to be balanced with another kind of matrix automatically collected. And sometimes this really requires a quality, a qualitative matrix, for example, just a feedback by the issue to meter about how, how much is satisfied with the ticket closure. I mean, so yeah, I think that. There is always an implicit uh, risk also if we are talking about responsiveness in the model that we are going to create a bias when we transform this to the to a target for the teams I mean. so would this be would, would this be about like at the metric level adding uh, a section or a subsection about potential bias that could occur because the examples yeah. that you're getting yeah yeah are yeah like we want to lower, right? Like closure. Yeah, I mean, something that if you are going to transform this in a target, you need to minimize this kind of risk. I mean, I, we have talked about this in the past, past in chaos. Like, what are the concerns around metric gaming or, or the bias that could occur? It's um, always part of the equation. Mm -hmm. And we've never really accounted for it, to be honest with you. We've always just kind of said it could exist and <laughs> and let the world figure out what that might be um so I, I think this is interesting to think about that we could I'm not saying do it but like think about a way to express the the bias that could exist with a particular metric or how a metric could be gamed yeah i i think that this explicitly um uh, it starts to, to be a problem when some organization is just trying to take your metrics and push that as a target. So, um, so merely some kind of employee could try to optimize that metrics mainly. Because generally in large organization, if you are not going to impact these metrics inside some kind of KPA or uh, OKRS, so, OKRS and KPA is something that needs to be mis miserable. So it's something related to a metric. So you cannot set an OKRS or KPA that could be not expressed as a, um, a miserable index. And so I think that all these are candidates for open source, open source performance. I mean, but the problem is that, uh, yeah, you need to always understand, yeah, you need to transform in target for company to have um, a real effect in the, um, in the um, quality of the um, repository or in the um, to improve the community some community index but you need to always be then aware what start to happen when you transform in a target and what kind of bias you could create with these metrics that is something honestly happened in the okrs on kpi in general it's not only related to charles metrics but it's a more general topic, but I think that if we want to have an impact with our metrics, we need to find a way to to tell to the companies how to transform these metrics in target for the employee. I mean, that are working every day with the, with the open source repository, and so on. I think that is less re relevant for mainly for um, uh, more. Uh, informal groups related to open source project or repository, but generally, I think that it's quite important when a 
large project is backed by a single company, a single big company or a few co big companies. And then we have um, community, external community members that are, that, are, that are going to interact with, the, with that repository. So to change something generally about this method, you need to always transform in, uh, in target for the company. I mean. If not, it's really hard to impact on that, especially because generally you can have an open source um, uh, team that is not strictly related to the engineering team. So you need generally to set this kind of metrics as a goal uh, for the engineering team that are working every day with the repository. Okay, so I'm going to suggest that we follow up on these discussions in maybe one of the metrics models channels yeah. or working groups. Um, Stefano, are you based in Europe? Yeah, I think that is okay. I hope that you can find the right working group or, or you can move the tickets in, in another repository of Charles. So. Okay. You can know better how you are organized, and I want to just to expose the the topic. Okay, cool. That's good. Um, are you are you based in Europe? I yeah, I'm in Rome. Okay. But currently, I work in Mali with um, as a contractor to um, Silicon Valley companies, and so I work remotely for them. And so I'm I'm involved in many open source projects, like also. Um, TensorFlow and other kind of project like OpenCV and so on, mainly in the field of artificial intelligence, computer vision. Cool. Um, the reason I asked about your location is because uh, I'm also in Europe and the metrics models meetings are at a terrible time for us. That's the yeah, one yeah. chaos Br working brutal, group that brutal. means that, I don't know, mm. it's something. Yeah, it's like it's two in the morning yeah. in most of Europe. I think it's only, it's only 1 a.m. your time, Don. <laughs> So, all right. So, I well, yeah, I would recommend kind of uh, maybe pop into the Slack channel for the metrics models and have some of the discussion, some of the discussion there. But that's that's what I'm going to suggest. Okay, cool. Um, next thing we have on the agenda is uh, reviewing old metrics. I missed the last two meetings. So, if someone else wants to drive this, that would be cool. This is me. So we're starting to, so as we have our 70 or so metrics that are released right now, this is from that community conversation done, the community call. So we're taking a look at, at reviewing older metrics um, simply because a lot of them need updating. They need, the language needs to be updated. They were released years ago and some may not, some may be completely good. So it's anything that's green on this list that's under released. Um, and so this doesn't preclude any metric, we agree that this doesn't preclude any metric that might be close to a release, those are, it's still cool to move those forward, this is just about reviewing the older ones. And so um, the, the proposed process right now and looking for feedback from anyone is that we, if, if there's a metric that's going to be reviewed or the, a metric that's under review, we open a new issue for that metric. So, you know, in the case of uh, common, that could be like organizational diversity or bot activity, whatever we have currently released, we would open a new issue indicating that we're doing a review of that metric. Um, we would label it with the couple labels that are there, revisiting metric and metrics candidate release. So just to indicate that, we would include a pointer to the old original closed metric associated with bot activity. So this isn't about reopening bot activity, but just post an issue to the to the original one or post a link to the original one. Um, and then listing specific ways that the, the, the metric could be improved. And so some of us right now are going through uh, different working groups to kind of make suggestions and like I have a list of, of DEI things so sometimes it's formatting issues sometimes it's grammar sometimes it, it's not following the proper template those kind of things so we could make a, a comment on all that and then Don if you could click on that new checklist link right there yep
Sorry. That's okay. It was telling me I was muted because it could hear noise, and that was over top of the link. Oh, okay. Until I unmuted myself. So if you could scroll down just a little bit, keep going until you see a list, basically that right there. Okay. And so this is like the, you know, this is kind of following. I, this isn't perfect yet because we just talked through this in DEI, but it would be a, another checklist for the review process. It's like we've added the label that I just mentioned earlier. We make sure that we put this in the translations repo. You know what I mean? If there are uh, changes to it. And then if you can kind of scroll down just a little bit on the content quality, it would kind of be to highlight at a high level, what are the things that are proposed to being uh, proposed changes. So if it's just formatting, make sure that you add date of last review, major or minor editorial changes, right? That it follows the most updated metric template. So just kind of, it's the same thing. It's just a little bit more targeted to uh, a review on a particular metric. And that's, that's it. And so then it would be part of the a release cycle. You know what I mean? Like this would essentially be like a new metric, but it would just kind of be labeled differently. So open to thoughts or, or feedback on, um, on this process. Uh, one question I have on this process, are we going to create a new issues for every review or since we already have an issue on the release metrics, we can reopen those and add this re uh, review checklist in that and continue the discussion so that where, we have the history yeah. and continue. Where we, where we landed, in at least in the DEI working group yesterday, was to create a new issue. And there were two reasons. Okay. One is that opening a new issue will move it to the top of the list. If we reopen a closed issue, it'll be down at the bottom of an issue list. In using an old issue, all of the conversation about edits to the metric will also be at the bottom of a long list of conversations. So we're just trying to raise all of those things to the top. And that's also why we suggested making a link to that old issue. So it's still they're oh. still connected, but it, it, yep. this approach just kind of moves things up a little bit. Thank you. This clarifies. Yep. Sean, Don, Kevin, Stefano. This all looks good. This all looks good to me. Okay. And Kevin, I think this would still work with the release process just fine, as far as I understand. Oops, you're on mute, Kevin. Uh, the checklist is basically a, a continuation of the of the checklist that we created for the review process. So it should uh yeah, it should be perfect. Okay. And we'd still do all the same things, like make sure that it's um, like it's got all the labels, you know what I mean? And that we sign off on it on the end and all that kind of stuff. So I could still be part of the release notes, like essentially new metric coming, you know, or updated metric. Okay. So follow up question. Um, how do we want to organize ourselves to do all of this? Because we've got a whole bunch of metrics to go through. Yep. So right now, um, between Sean, Elizabeth, myself, Kevin, and Venya, we've all kind I'm of agreed to take a look at, um, at the. And I believe I'm assigned a common. So take a look at the the different um, working groups. So Sean would actually start going through that list of the green rows mm -hmm. in common. It wouldn't be. It doesn't have to be a you know, like a perfect list from Sean, but it's at least a starting point to kind of help orient folks. And, it, and it's okay too, like for any of us, Kevin, Sean, myself, and Benya, and um, Elizabeth, that if a metric looks good, we just, that's it. <laughs> you can just kind of mark it in the spreadsheet and, you know, like if it was just released, then it, it should be okay. So is there an indicator on the spreadsheet uh, whether the metric is under like review? Uh, like there, since we have a release green under community review yellow like any labeling in that regard? there's not i was just using the remarks column d but we could make a new column yeah. so we had talked about creating a column that had the last review date uh, and we could use that last review date column as an indicator that something uh needs to be reviewed as well or okay. 
So maybe add a last review, last review date column, and then then that would help us in the future track which okay. which ones if if we get into a situation where we can kind of go back and kind of periodically review metrics that then we have those this this coordinating document to help us do that. Okay. Don, could you click on the um, DEI tab? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have something? Yeah, sorry. I was going to say for the ones that we're that we decide we're in the process of updating, would we change that last reviewed column to be like currently in progress or something? I'm not understanding how that last reviewed column would help me see which of the metrics we're currently revising. Yeah, I was thinking something okay. along along okay. those lines. There's a, a date of last review, or if there's no date there, the, the message would be pending or in progress. Or... Okay. Cool. So you can see in the remarks, see row 15, code of conduct at event. Like that's this is like a rework so basically this is this one's taking a lot of work so i essentially just recreated a new google doc for it so we kind of go back to, to the beginning we go all that we create a google doc we work in the google doc it's the same process that we did for a new metric it's just this process starts with a bunch of data in it already you know like a lot of info in the doc so i just put it there so Vinod, i don't know if or anybody if you think that's a good place to kind of uh, I would suggest having a label will be more helpful because we have the same process. Like it's under review, then it's uh, ready for release. It's under community review after re-review. Oh, I can do that. Yep, yep. That's a good idea. So just that drop-down list is what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Good idea. And then, should I make a new column that says, you know? not remarks, but it would say something like, you know, review document or something like that. I don't know. I, I think that will work in the remarks. We have already in the remarks, like once it is released, the re remarks are no more there because it's yeah. released, but right now it's under review. So that column will serve the purpose, but having a color coding will help distinguish okay. what is being. Yep. Happy to do that. I can do that across this spreadsheet. Good idea. Okay. Okay. So I think we're about out of time. Anyway, <clears throat> is there anything else anyone wants yeah. to talk about? All this discussion of holidays makes me want some ham. <laughs> I have to go get some ham. <laughs> okay. Well, you go get some ham. The rest of us can enjoy yeah. our 10 or 15 minutes. Day. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Very good. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, Don. Your stuff should be collecting now. I'm trying it again. Okay. So, I'll take so. another look in a couple hours. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye.